Hello, big news from our friends over at DistroKid. They now have an app. This app works on iOS and Android, of course. And it's available in the Apple Store and Google Play Stores and all the stores where you buy apps. Go check it out. It's got a lot of cool features. You can upload new releases. You can get notified when you've earned royalties. Awesome. You can withdraw from the app via push notifications. A little dangerous for me, but rad. Anyways, go check it out. It's all at distrokid.com slash app. And don't forget, you can still get 30% off your DistroKid account by going to distrokid.com slash VIP slash tour stories. Have a great one. We would like to celebrate our friends and supporters over at isotope.com. Find makers of audio software for repair, mixing, and mastering. You know their goods. RX-10, Neutron 4, Ozone 11, Nectar 4. Chris and I love them. We use them. And we know you'll love them too. And right now, they're having a New Year's sale on many of their software bundles. Go to isotope.com and check it all out. And use code RUIN10 when you check out to get your discount. Again, it's I-Z-O-T-O-P-E dot com. And enjoy. Glenn, can you hear me? I can. Can you uh, hear me? I can. Your voice is deep on this mic. I, I was just, that was an affectation. That was a radio. Doing that on purpose. This is my radio voice. How are you doing? I'm okay. Yeah. And and you? We're, I'm okay. Hanging in there, talking to people, trying to play some music, trying to get better at editing drums. I always wanted to master it, and it's tough. Well, it's a a handy skill to have, that's for sure. So I think your your goal is a is a good choice. <laughs> um, <laughs> what have you been doing with yourself for the last week at home? Uh, I wish it was more exciting, but I've been homeschooling <laughs> oh. uh, my two my two kids. Basically, that's been I, I was able to practice brushes for about ten minutes and able to paint a uh, a bedroom that needs it. But uh, other than that, uh, my kids are at that perfect age where they have enough. Uh, schooling, like uh, online schooling, a lot of classes, activities, daily assignments, daily Google classrooms and hangouts and check-ins. And it's actually a pretty intense, rigorous schedule for being online, but they're still young enough where they need constant oversight and help. So my wife's a professor. She's been, you know, working nonstop because she's in bioengineering. So it's been falling on me to be, you know, dad. Yeah. Well, that's nice. And you're um, you're at home in Chicago. Uh, I'm actually in uh, Wisconsin. Oh, at, nice. At our cottage in Wisconsin. Yeah. All right. This week, have you have you talked to anyone out of the blue or texted with anyone that you haven't communicated with in a while? Um, I I have actually. Yeah, some a couple drummer friends. Uh, one or two guys I went to college with and I've actually been, you know, in touch with my bandmates more than I, I would otherwise off the road or out of the studio. Right. Me too. It's interesting. We've got a pretty um, fierce text thread going ourselves. Yeah. Cold, I guess it's one of, the, kids. one of the upsides of, uh, of this whole thing. And there's so many downsides, of course, but, People will be better cooks. The environment will get a lot better. Right. And uh, I think communication might actually increase real communication amongst friends. That's right. Um, do you have a text thread going with the band? We do because we're working on some stuff. Mm -hmm. And then there's just, you know, the other oddities like, oh, yeah, these dates also got canceled. and Right. Yeah. Well, I was going towards, um, we're constantly making bad jokes in our threads. Mm. You got any bad <laughs> jokes in your text thread? Um, <laughs> not bad jokes, more, but I do remember one 
the other day it was Nels, Nels Klein, mm -hmm. who um, texted us all that he had just watched um, uh, a dodgeball, an underdog story. Yeah. Um, and and just texted like, oh my God, I wish I would have watched this with you all on a bus ride because, you know, as a band is, I'm sure every band, we watch a lot of movies together on the bus and we yeah. all like get together and cram in, you know, where there's just not enough seats, pretty much one person has to stand. Um, and we all cram in and watch a lot of movies together, um, which is nice, you know, after being in this band, well, coming up on 20 years, it's, it's good that we all still enjoy really genuinely enjoy hanging out but uh no but he mentioned that he he watched dodgeball and he wished he had watched it with us and i think it was pat sansone who replied you know is that is was that on the criterion channel and and um maybe there john said i think it's streaming on pbs and yeah just you know there it is mild humor but yeah, enough to to cause me to smile for sure yeah yeah it's funny as you said when you get home from tour which we did and February, I think mid February, and then this all went down. We, you know, you usually part ways socially with your band for a while, but we haven't done that. We're gonna, we miss each other already. Yeah, that's nice. That's a sign that you're in the right band with the right people. Yeah, I'm sure you have, but uh, you have a lot of shows canceled or quote unquote postponed. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. the the mysterious postponed. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were Wilco was three shows into a month long tour, so we got to Madison, Duluth, and Winnipeg, and drove to Calgary, and then that was canceled, and then Missoula, and then the Seattle shows, and and I actually was supposed to get back Monday. Oh wow. Yeah. So so we came I came back, you know, within a week um because we drove back straight from Calgary to Chicago. Um and so I would have been gone for a month which for Wilco is about the max that we're ever gone. And for me it's about the max I can do emotionally just with the kids still being in grade school. Um you know and and my wife being so incredibly busy too. Um it's a lot to, you know, to leave them for any longer than that. So um so it was nice to be home and with the family during this time, but you know, I wish it were under better circumstances, of course. And yeah. I think I had a solo performance or two or three in Europe in summer and those are getting postponed and yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. I'm still blindly hopeful to something. I'm not sure which, and I don't want to jinx any thing good that could happen for any of us rock and rollers to be able to play music again in front of people so i'll just yeah. keep my blind hope to myself yes and hope that we can live off our wives incomes yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh um <laughs> how about uh media anything that stands out as particularly interesting in the last week or it could be funny again it could be sad it doesn't have to be any of those things um no i mean so besides a lot of like you know movie nights with the family like i'll check in on you know i started a project on instagram at the beginning of the year just posting a beat a week yeah that's my new form of composition is writing these micro compositions kind of a, as a reaction to i did those three concertos within one year a couple of years ago and kind of burnt out and just instead of writing these 18 you know, to 30 minute pieces, I wanted to just start writing these three second pieces. Mm -hmm. And so I just have been loving writing beats for myself. And so I post those, it's part of a, a project, I did that book, a, a beat a week, but so I check in on Instagram. And, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm such a, a dork, most of it is drummers. Um, yeah. That I follow, you know, or, or you know, I've got some friends, you know, a few comedians, but mo mostly drummers. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been I've been digging Eric Slick. I don't know if you if you're friendly with him at all, but uh, the drummer from Doctor Dog, he used to play with Adrian. Oh Blue, yeah, and I've met him. He's an but, amazing, yeah. uh, beautiful person and just a monster, youngling drummer. And he's been just uh, doing a series of covers, just kind of every every other day or so. He'll just cover beats you know songs 
um, and and he always nails it, and it's always just fun seeing what he picks. And yeah, I've been enjoying uh, that. I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out. I just go to uh, Mark Giuliano if I need something to brighten my oh, day. Oh yeah. I think I cried the last time I saw him play live. He played for about 20 minutes solo, and it was in s- crazy. Really? Yeah, at the revival anniversary. Oh, Mark Giuliano, beautiful. Um, well, what do you think about playing one of your tunes? Um, sure. <laughs> so um, I've been digging in actually with uh, um, on Fillmore, uh, my longtime duo, 22, 23 year old duo with Darren Gray, the bass player from St. Louis, mm-hmm. monster musician in person. Um, our very first project we ever did together was like, um, you know, two CDs and some postcards and stuff in a wooden box. I think there were a hundred made and 50 were released out there. And that's the track I'm picking because Oh, maybe only 50 people have ever heard this if they even yeah. bothered to listen to it. Um, they probably just bought it the way it for, you know, the way the box looked, but yeah, the packaging. Yeah. And it's never been released online or anything like that. And it just kind of resonated with me again during these dark times. Cause it, the whole thing is about chaos and spontaneity and Let's play it now, and then we'll talk about it for a sec once we play it. How it's long a feel-good it? tune. It's long. What is it's it, like 16 number, minutes? Right? 16 minutes. We Something might, like that? What is I it? Think, yeah. I think what we'll do is play it from the beginning, and then we may do some fades, and then we'll play it in entirety at the end for the real Yeah, you're not going to miss the hook or the, the, yeah. the chorus. Don't worry. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> What's it called? Incline on the inside. Okay. Which is a direct. Uh, it's a. It's a quote, kind of from the the man who inspired that tune, Paul Litton. Mm-hmm. So he's one of my drumming heroes. He's a European improvising drummer who started in the seventies, like from that school of total kind of free improv that was different than kind of the u.s based improv came more out of jazz where this was kind of it didn't have that connection and it's just super out there uh beautiful music but there's a few standout drummers from that whole scene he's one of them paul Litton. he had a solo record called the incline stick um it's it's a pretty funny cover and no lady leaning on a cane but Mm. anyway in on it he just kind of has this array of sounds on his kit you know it's all prepared drums 
And I think they always say selected and unselected drums and cymbals because stuff is just kind of flying all over the place. It's like really free form, you know, no beats, no rhythms. Right. And it's, it's kind of a, a wall of sound, one track in particular. And so I was like, I want to do that. And I, I recorded a like 30 second track with drums and putting all sorts of my, you know, like ashtrays and metal plates and chains and stuff all over my drums. And then just going nuts with as many, you know, sticks and mallets and just crashing into each other. It was chaos. And then from there, I basically just stacked it. So it played once by itself and then, then it repeats. So by minute two, you've got, you know, two of the same tracks playing on top of each other, but a little delayed. And then by, you know, minute 15, you've got 15 of these tracks. So it turns into this just cacophony, kind of intense noise track, basically. And then at the end, it just kind of peters down to back to the original track. And then I'm just rubbing some Chinese symbols together at the end to take it out. But it's complete chaos. It sounds like doom. And that's why it's been resonating with me now. It does sound like doom, especially right in that dense middle. But you know what I really like? Well, I love the the whole thing, but I, I like how it ends a lot. There's some joy at the ending. <laughs> well, thank you. I don't think you, you may have been the first person to ever give me feedback on this track. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, it's great. It reminds me of a John Cage piece that I saw in L.A. when I was visiting a few years back that was mostly percussion that turned into a cacophony of noise and sound and it was gorgeous yeah cage is is always in there in anything i play he's such an influence but um well moving on to some more music ideas um i do this occasionally and i've been doing it for some reason in the last week coincidentally it was with a john prine song but is there a song that you've heard in the last week that you've gone back to a a song like that you hadn't heard in a while or was new to you and you just listened to it you know a bunch of times in the last week yeah and it's probably completely opposite of that track of mine that you're just playing which is you know chaos and doom and this is just when i was living in finland a couple years ago with my family i really got into the music of uh, arvo part I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it correctly, but the composer, the Estonian composer, um, and started reading some of his stuff and just kind of really got into his music. And ever since then, when I wake up um, playing certain tunes of his, and Mm -hmm. so this one, this last couple weeks has been on pretty regular rotation. It's called Spiegel im Spiegel. um, And it's just a really pretty tune from this, you know, uh, um, I'd say this is about as accessible as he gets, but that, and then also right along lines with that, the third coast percussion paddle to the sea there, it was two records ago that they put out. I've worked with those guys. They're an incredible percussion ensemble. Great group of guys. Aguas da Amazonia. And I think it's part four. It's a Philip Glass tune, but these are both very simple, pretty nice tunes. And I've listened to those. I'd say every day, the last week, last two weeks. And then one more thing. Yeah. As long as you're asking, yesterday, yeah. Jim O'Rourke came out with his uh, latest Bandcamp release, yeah. number 47. So Jim O'Rourke is, you know, the reason I'm in Wilco. I played with him before Wilco. He got me into Wilco. He produced a few of our records. He's my musical hero. Um, and he's been kind of just quietly releasing these records every few months on Bandcamp under Steam Room. And 47 came out yesterday, and I've probably listened to that like five times since they came out, <laughs> just having it on, because his stuff is, it's always just brilliant. He's just, yeah, like That's, you can't, I'm not going to try and put words to it. Speaking of you two, I can see my halfway to a three freeway record from here. Where I'm Oh, sitting. nice. That's a funny one. Um. All right, well, it sounds, you know, it sounds like you and the family are as happy and as healthy as you can be yeah. right now. Um, We're getting through it. Yeah. We're getting through it. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to ask you one last thing, and it's mm-hmm. um, advice or recommendations to increasing your mental or physical health during these times of quarantine. Yeah, well, 
I mean, you know what I started doing about a year and a half or two years ago is when I'm home in Chicago, the first thing I do when I wake up is I go out and I practice for an hour before the family wakes up, before I brush my teeth, before I check my phone or anything. Then I come in and I stretch. But since I've been here in Wisconsin, the first thing I do here when I wake up is stretch. Mm -hmm. And that's made an incredible difference for me for just physically starting the day stretching for like just 10 minutes just simple simple stretches it makes me feel physically better i get my blood flowing it just makes me feel much better and stable as a person physically um because i don't go to a gym and i don't um you know i think you're a runner i'm yeah. i'm not a runner i love biking but i don't get to do it that often basically i hike and i drum those are my only physical activities but the stretching has really i think just just pausing life and and stretching has really helped me and then the other thing more mentally as i was talking to darren gray the other day about the chaos of trying to homeschool and try and you know get this video to zildjian and do this class for michigan and do it you know and get all this stuff done and paint this and i was like i'm sure i'll get in a groove soon or maybe i'll get in a battle i'll find the balance soon i'm sure it'll be fine and and he was just like nah, i don't know man i think I think these are pretty crazy times. I think you, by trying to find a balance and by searching for the, for a balance, you know, the whole paradox is one of the tenets of life. You know, I think like that paradox is probably going to push you away from finding, um, you know, any sort of peace or, you know, uh, sanity. He's like, I think yeah. these are crazy times and you just need to embrace the fact that they are crazy times. And you know that every day when you wake up, you're just going to have you know, thousands of balls thrown at you. You're going to catch a bunch of them. A lot of them you're going to drop or miss. And that's just life. And I wouldn't worry too much about catching every one of them. And I wouldn't worry. He didn't use that analogy. I am, but he was just yeah, like, yeah. I think you need to just like, uh, just go head on, dive into the chaos with, with vigor and excitement and just, uh, and just try and deal with all the stuff that gets thrown at you. So I think maybe that's it. Instead of trying to find a normalcy in all of this, I think maybe just embrace the the chaos and realize it's going to be crazy and that you can't be, nothing's going to turn out exactly the way you want it to turn out. So be happy with that and be happy with doing the best you can. That's good. And that piece of music that we, we just listened to is a good soundtrack for that. Embrace that chaos. Yes. <laughs> Perfect soundtrack. Great tie-in, man. You are you are on this podcasting stuff. What a host. <laughs> All right. Well, I think you have a class soon. I think you may I be do. late for the class, so I don't want to make you late, but I appreciate your time. Well, I appreciate you thinking of me for this. And yeah, you know, I wish uh, I was supposed to see you about two weeks ago in Seattle. But, um, hopefully that show will be postponed. Yes. And oh, my God, it's snowing. Uh, it just started oh, really? like a blizzard happening outside. Crazy. Wow. Anyway. Um, okay. Yeah, but uh, um, hopefully those shows will be made up and I'll get to see you uh, sometime this year because you're one of my favorite people. Thank you, man. Oh, you too. I missed you in Chicago one month ago because I you know, were in Mexico. I was on the road. So, yeah. Um, but at least we were playing shows. We'll see each other soon enough, I hope. Yeah, well, thanks a lot, Joe. I appreciate right. it. Thank you. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.